Welcome to another session of We Connect, where we explore the ideas, companies, and key players that continue to raise the bar in e-discovery. Everyone, and welcome to the webinar channel of the Association of Certified e-discovery specialists. My name is Mike Quattararo. I'm the president of ACEDS. Today, we will be joined by our partner, iConnect, for a showcase responsible data intelligence from iConnect. This should be exciting. Please stay tuned and get ready. But before we get started, please know we love questions. We're happy to take your questions. You can submit your questions using the Q&A widget located on your screen. Uh, there should be a slide deck available in the resource widget as well if you'd like to download it. And then without further delay, I am super excited to introduce Ian Campbell, the CEO of iConnect, who will take the presentation from here. Ian, take it away. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate uh, appreciate the opportunity to uh, share some exciting stuff from iConnect. Uh, we are a week out from uh, from Legal Week, and uh, we will be there with bells on. Looking forward to that. Uh, personally, I think it's my 26th or 27th Legal Week, which is uh, which is always exciting to see the transitions that have taken place over time. And speaking of transition, uh, I think that's what people are going to see with iConnect today. Um, a real transition from where we've been to where we are. Um, uh, and I think uh, we've got a group today to help us to help us really showcase that. Um, I'm on the phone today. Uh, Mike Federowski is here. He's a senior manager on the business solutions side. Emily Johnston, who's been uh, working uh, furiously uh, to, to help us develop our incident response offering. And John Uni, the product manager of data governance, he's going to be uh, not only talking about, but also showing you some, some pretty exciting stuff on the data governance side. Um, just a, a high-level overview of what we're going to do today. I'm going to do a quick uh, quick intro for those of you familiar with iConnect or not familiar with iConnect. It'll give you some context as to who we are and what we do and why we feel very comfortable and confident on the phone today to talk to you about the solutions we're bringing to the table. We, we very much have kind of been there, done that on the e-discovery side, and now we're taking a lot of that wealth of knowledge and applying it to other industries and other challenges within the business community. Uh, that's going to give you a bit of a new view of iConnect. Uh, you saw the tagline earlier about uh, responsible intelligence, and really that's what we are applying to data. And I think you'll see that in a couple of different ways. We're going to showcase some things we've done on the data governance and data minimization side, uh, some uh, <clears throat> developments that we've been working on on the cyber incident response uh, side of things. And then uh, further to that, we've got a new version of iConnect that we're going to be showcasing at the show. It is in, in market now. So we're not showing you vaporware. We're showing you stuff that uh, is available. And uh, Mike Federowski is going to lead us through that. So over the course of the next hour, I think you're going to see some very exciting stuff. Some of it you may be familiar with. Some of it will be brand new to you. And we're very excited to share our story as we're broadening the, um, the, uh, the product matrix within, within the iConnect company. Um, we are, and we certainly see ourselves as, across all of what we do, experienced, creative, agile problem solvers obsessed with simplifying your data. That certainly is how we view the world uh, and how we view our contribution to what you're doing every day. We're a technology company. We make technology and, uh, and, and we make good technology. And we've been doing that for quite some time, which means we've learned a lot. We're continually looking for ways to do what we do best, but also ways to look over the horizon to make sure that we can continue to meet the needs of the industry. When I say we've been there, done that, we've been there, done that on a lot of fronts. Uh, you'll see a lot of logos in front of you. Um, many of those you'll recognize. Many of those you'll recognize as having been involved in legal cases. And um, those are all individuals who have struggled at some, some point in time with an incident or some kind of a, an occurrence within their organization uh, where they needed, um, they needed help. They needed help with their data. Uh, what have we got? What, what, what do we have that, that we can find? What do we, what do we have that we shouldn't have? Uh, what do we have that maybe contains information that needs to be protected in some way or shared in some way? And all of these organizations have trusted iConnect throughout the years to help them achieve some of their goals with that data. And uh, I, I don't need to kind of name names on there. I think of, of most of you are familiar with, with, uh, with the bulk of those. A couple of interesting ones, though, uh, the DPOL spill, which, was, of course, was the, um, 
the uh, the the Deepwater Horizon incident. Um, I Connect was was used on that on the plaintiff side, just for size and scope. 350 law firms uh, centered in and around uh, uh, billions of documents. Um, most of it on the plaintiff side, identifying all the different claims that had to be made. Volkswagen emission case, Toyota seatbelt. Um, those are all the kinds of cases that we've been involved in. So I think when we talk today about our expertise in the in the uh, in the document management and document investigation and analysis community, we've certainly been there, done that across multiple different large scale uh, and sometimes sometimes small scale projects. Uh, we do have available later today uh, on our downloads area um, we uh, a couple of different case studies we've been involved in. This one happens to be around the BP side of things. 116,000 plaintiffs, 4 billion documents, and they used a unique piece of technology from iConnect called Exemplar, the ability to create a synthetic document for each of the 11 issues and literally throw it into the wild and gather back the documents that, that, that are very similar to the synthetic document that was created. An unbelievable way to find maybe the top 500 or the top 1,000 documents that meet the need of, of the, uh, the issues that you're trying to find. So $18 billion settlement, certainly not a small project. In a similar fashion, we were involved in the LG case. 5.8 terabytes of data, which anybody in the, in the industry knows is a lot of data, a lot of that in Korean. And um, so we were working in multi-languages to, uh, to be able to, uh, to do that. We used some of our patented um, uh, Sentio technology to, do a, uh, to, to identify high value documents and then from there analyze and find other documents of, cont of, of consistently high value. Again, a $1.8 billion settlement, which was the highest claim that's ever been uh, uh, awarded from the ITC. So again, big projects, we're certainly, certainly comfortable in that arena. But what we have done is we have, um, uh, we have a new version of our software. And the reason that's important is that it, it actually, the foundational architecture of the iConnect platform um, has been upgraded. Um, we have moved over to Elasticsearch. That's something you will start to see in all of our, all of our products, all of our applications. Um, and this is a quote from our CTO, Ayad al -Kabi. The words unlocked and unleashed come to mind when describing this milestone release. Virtually every aspect of the foundational architecture has been modified, enhanced, and accelerated with the adoption of Elasticsearch search throughout the platform. These core code changes now set the platform on a path for continued development of both core features and enhanced artificial intelligence integration. Enhanced artificial intelligence integration. We are hearing it all the time. You're hearing it all the time. We are very aware of what we have. We, are, we also have lots of ideas of where we can go. And we're going to talk about that as we continue forward today. These are the things, though, that are really inherent within the iConnect platform. Um, that foundational technology, it has things like security, search, imaging, extraction, production, tagging, redaction, sharing, all those things we've had in our document review platform for years. It's also web-based, browser agnostic, can be, can be deployed on-prem or in a SaaS environment. We have a worldwide channel of vendors. We have an outstanding support team. We've integrated AI, patented Sentio technology built in, uh, AFI code that we purchased three, four years ago now uh, that has been embedded right into the application. And what we found over the course of the, uh, the, last, uh, the last year was that that core foundation of architecture has other use cases to solve business challenges. So we started to look into the market and go, where else can this technology benefit an industry? And as we did that, we came up with some very interesting stuff. One of them we're going to talk about today is on the data governance side for data minimization. We have, with our core platform, the ability to go in and identify documents within a large corpus at scale. We can analyze those documents. You, as the user, can then, using AI or, or manually, make decisions against those documents and then execute those decisions. Nothing worse than looking at a bunch of data and knowing what you've got, but then not then having to hire another company to go out and actually do the work on it. Um, we've actually built all of that together into a data minimization uh, platform working inside the data governance, governance sphere. On the cyber side, we are seeing, like you are seeing, um, and it's, uh, uh, 
a large volume of, of, of incidents. Um, we've all uh, heard of them. Maybe some of you have been involved in them. They're challenging. I do want to say that our component of that is not to solve everything related to incident response. But what we are very good at is identifying documents, analyzing the documents, and reporting against those documents. And we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Further on the e-discovery side, obviously the, the uh, foundational changes on the core architecture uh, certainly work to under, underpin the data minimization and the incident response area, but they also work very strongly to underpin the continued expansion of our e-discovery platform. We've been a trusted technology partner for law firms and corporations and service providers for years, and we certainly plan on continuing to do that. And um, But uh, what we are going to do today, though, is bounce into a couple of different things. Um, there are unique features that we have in the iConnect platform, uh, some interesting stuff in and around the analytics we talked about, uh, the dynamic table review, some of those things, and Mike's going to talk about those a little later. But what I'm going to do right now is I pass the torch over. I said, told everybody I would be no more than 10 minutes. I went to 11, so I apologize to uh, whoever's going to lose a minute off their time today. But I believe um, uh, we're going to pass the torch over to John Uni, who's going to talk about the, something new, uh, an offering which is new from iConnect in and around the helping corporations and organizations and government agencies deal with the vast volumes of data that they're really trying to get their arms around. John, over to you. Thank you, Ian. Can everybody hear me, see everything? Let me just share my screen real quick, make sure it's all good. So thank you, Ian, once again. Uh, my name is Jonathan Uni. I am the uh, uh, product manager for uh, data governance with iConnect. Uh, just a little background for me. I, uh, I've been with iConnect for a little over a year. Um, I come from a background uh, that's all technology-based, uh, network engineering, software engineering, and uh, security engineering. So when I got the opportunity to uh, um, see what iConnect was doing, building off of the, uh, the power of the um, uh, technical capabilities they had to uh, expand into this environment, I was really excited to be able to join the team. So um, just a little background on why uh, we moved into this environment, why it's such uh, an important issue that we see. Um, obviously, data is continuously amassing at a rate never before seen in human history. Um, we have the ability to create data, new tools, new systems for uh, developing and generating content are coming out at uh, an unseen and uh, uh, never before uh, recognized um, speeds. And the ability to then manage that data becomes incredibly important. And what we're finding is companies are struggling with that a great deal. Uh, a couple of years ago, Veritas did a, a huge study across um, organizations, everything from you know Fortune 20 organizations down to small to medium enterprises. And they determined that in that data on average, 54% of the data that was being stored was unclassified dark data, meaning the company doesn't actually know what that data is. They don't know what they're storing. And if you don't know what you're storing, you don't know how to secure it. You don't know why you're storing it, right? And then on top of that, another 32% of the data that they actually know about was considered rot. And rot means redundant, obsolete, or trivial data. Redundant meaning it's duplicated, obsolete meaning it's old, you shouldn't have it anymore, and trivial means you should never have stored it in the first place. And so when you add those together, that's over 85% of the data that organizations are storing that they don't actually have an idea of um, why they're storing it and why they should be storing it. And in fact, uh, in a recent call that we had with some industry professionals, the legal industry, 53% uh, of them said that rot analysis and rot management was their primary concern. So we've seen that the, the problems surrounding bad data and poor data management lead to bad decision making and inaccurate data, of course, reduce productivity because people have to try and find the data that they're looking for. Then, of course, you have security risks that come along that, with that. If you don't know what your data is, how are you able to secure it? How are you able to to make sure that only the right people are accessing it and that it's backed up and protected where it needs to be. Then, of course, something that's on a lot of people's minds now, uh, because the GDPR and California and so on, we have compliance issues, only storing the data on people that we're supposed to be storing and getting rid of data that we shouldn't be. The fines 
coming out from some of these GDPR violations are absolutely massive. And so those compliance issues are incredibly important. So ultimately what we see is that businesses have to spend way too much time focused on just handling their data instead of adding value with their data. So naturally the solution for that is good data management. Now data management uh, facilitates every other aspect of the business, it makes everything else better. And to be able to do it, you really need to have effective and comprehensive tools. And that's where we wanted to try and um, put our hat in the ring to be able to help our, um, our clients to be able to manage their data, to be able to get a handle on their data so they can really get a hold of this problem that uh, we're seeing more and more prevalent in this time. And so just some of the areas that um, iConnect is uh, currently developing and in ongoing development as well. You know, the first things uh, that we started working on was the ability to classify your data. Um, of course, if you're dealing with mass amounts of data, before you can make any sort of decision on them, you need to be able to know what that data is. You need to be able to know who owns it, who's the stakeholder, who has access to it, who's creating that data, what groups does it belong to. Being able to identify that allows you to then make decisions on that because usually the technology person or the legal uh, individual or whoever's actually running this process doesn't necessarily have the authority to just sort of you know, wipe away data as they choose. They have to contact and communicate with people. So that allows for um, the ability to, to figure out who they need to collaborate with on that. Then of course, we have the deduplication and the data cleansing um, procedures to be able to remove out duplicates, to be able to remove obsolete data. Now, some organizations are very nervous about removing obsolete data, but they have the opportunity as well to perhaps archive that data. Our, Capabilities are extensive within the application to be able to move and manipulate data as you need to in order to be able to um, firmly get a grasp on uh, the information that you're storing. And then of course, removing out trivial data as well. Looking forward to the future, um, we're aiming to work with our partners on uh, building out tools to help migration. Of course, before you migrate, especially as we're starting to look at um, a lot of organizations moving to the cloud and now having to pay monthly for storage, right? You wanna have the cleanest possible data set that you're working with in order to be able to, to move that data properly. And so, uh, you know, it'd be great if the world was as simple as copying and pasting your data from one place to another, but really in, a, in an organizational migration, that's not the case. It's much more complicated than that. And so being able to build automated policy-based migrations uh, really makes uh, the process a lot easier and also helps to save a lot of money as well. And then ultimately, ongoing uh, management of data. So it's great when you can run the process and clean up all your data, but what happens the next day? Obviously that data, you know, the problem starts again. People start saving data in the wrong place. They start duplicating data. They start saving stuff they shouldn't be saving. All of these problems are a continual ongoing. It's part of the business cycle. And so being able to enforce retention policies automatically, to have proactive classification. So as data comes into your system, you have um, artificial intelligence that's able to look at that and be able to determine, okay, this data belongs to HR. This data, judging by what it has, belongs to research and development. All of that sort of information makes the ongoing management of data a lot easier. And so just really briefly, the workflow that we uh, utilize in the environment, the first thing that we do, of course, is ingest the data. Now, being that you're dealing with trying to fix storage problems, the last thing that we wanna do is create more of a storage problem. So the ingestion process scans the data in place. Um, so you're not moving data, you're not copying data to another location. All you're doing is scanning the data as it sits and then utilizing that data to store it and then ultimately visualize it and act on it. Being able to visualize it, as we see here, visualization is incredibly important. When you're dealing with mass amounts of data, you can't just look at it record by record, right? You need to be able to look at it as a whole, be able to understand where your problems are and uh, where you need to attack first. And so the capability of our visualizations really um, inform the decisions that we're trying to make. And as we make those decisions, we can decide on things like deduplication, obsolescence, and then of course, maybe I don't know what to do with this data. I need to call in a subject matter expert. Well, the collaboration capabilities inside 
of iConnect really make that powerful because you know, one thing that we find as we talk to a lot of clients is they hate the fact that they have to jump from system to system to be able to manage their stuff. To be able to manage and clean and work with their data, they have to do one thing over here, then they have to jump over here, then they have to jump over here, and that makes it incredibly difficult for them. And so being able to work with the entire uh, data set and even create subsets of data, assign those off to another person, really makes that workflow um, cohesive and it allows for um, intuitive collaboration, which is which is really important in the process. So I'm gonna jump over to the application real quick and just give you a, a brief view of what it looks like. So this is the sort of standard user environment as you come in. Now this environment is completely customizable. Um, all of these charts, all the um, folders, records, everything, are completely customizable. So as you're working with the environment, you can make it as um, attuned to the way that you like to work and the information that you're trying to find as you do. And so to begin with, we talked about those visualizations. Here's a number of visualizations that we utilize to try and get a handle on how your data is, um, is currently classified. So for instance, in this data set, we have duplication based on size, duplication based on count, um, those levels of duplication help you see how much money you're wasting in storage versus how much money is being wasted from a management perspective because data that's duplicated by file count, that really informs how much time people have to sift through bad data in order to be able to, or duplicated or wasteful data, in order to be able to find what they're looking for. Then as you come down here, you're able to see the age of the data. Uh, that really informs, of course, to obsolete data. If you have a retention policy that says you don't need to keep records past seven years, well, chances are you can go back to all your data that's older than seven years and begin working with deletion and cleanup there as well. Then we break down by things like file type and um, file categorizations. That sort of information allows you to really look for um, trivial or obsolete data, maybe systems you don't use anymore, file types you don't utilize anymore, things like that really help to uh, inform that. And of course, all of these are interactive, so you can click on any one of these charts and it's going to um, load that data into the um, search system here. And the search system is going to reload and pull that data um, specifically that you're looking for reorganize and re-index the data based on that so that you can begin um, interacting uh, with specifically the data that you want. Now I'm just going to jump back to my, get rid of my search. And then once your data is loaded, you'll also see up here, you know, this is our messages and notification system where we have the ability to collaborate um, and interact with other users. We can um, assign our um, to uh, we can assign our files and folders and everything like that to other users, and then interact and share those folders with them so that they have the ability um, to uh, make decisions on that and help all of us work together as we as we interact in that. So that's just a brief overview of uh, of the environment. Am I handing off the mic now? Or I'm handing yeah, off to yeah. Emily, that's right. I think it's coming Emily. to me. Yeah. Coming yeah. To yeah, that's great. All right, yeah, so, hand so, it off to Emily. All right. Well, thanks so much. Um, hope you guys enjoyed a brief data minimization demo there. Um, I'm here to talk to you about uh, iConnect Incident Response Data Mining, uh, which is something that I joined iConnect about a year ago to start uh, building and developing um, based on my experience over the last, the previous five years, running a very large um, incident response data mining team at a large vendor, um, hundreds and hundreds of uh, review projects every single year, um, and really growing and developing that um, that process. Uh, for those of you who know about data mining, you know that it sort of looks and smells like e-discovery, but once you get into it, um, you realize that, in fact, it's quite different <laughs> from your standard discovery. Um, I like to say that discovery is a categorization um, approach and data mining is a data extraction 
approach. And so what you're needing to do, the end goal of what you need to do in data mining as opposed to e-discovery is actually quite different. Um, the tools that we have on the market today um, <clears throat> are built with different uh, approaches in mind. And um, I really wanted to come and build a tool somewhere that um, that was going to be a purpose-built tool from the perspective of the people who have to do the work um, so that you can get to an answer more quickly uh, and you can get to um, and you can get to who needs to be notified uh, swiftly. So let me make sure that you guys are seeing the slides here. And we will go from there. Uh, I'll just talk through them. OK, so uh, for the, our incident response review overview, like I said, it is quite different from your typical cyber or your typical e-discovery review. Um, first, what you have to do is identification, right? So when you have an e-discovery matter, you know, OK, I have 2,500 documents. You know about how long that's going to take. There's lots and lots of data out there to say, um, how long a review is going to take when it is uh, a certain number of documents. Um, now we have, uh, um, in cyber, we have to know how many people, how many data subjects are inside of every single document. So if I have 100 documents, there could be 10 data subjects, in which case it would be a pretty quick review. There could be 1,000 data subjects. There could be a million data subjects, depending on what the data is. So um, it's important to get a really quick glimpse into your data so that you can have an idea of how long your review is going to take, how many people you might need to staff on that review, and so forth. Um, after you've done that identification, um, go to extraction, where we actually pull out um, the entities and extract the data that um, is sort of attorney defined. So if there's a name, a uh, first name and a last name, then we pull out all of the personal information so that um, those folks can be appropriately notified. The third step is verification, uh, meaning we're going to um, be doing QC on that data, and then we're also going to be normalizing that data in order to create a notification list. So if you know Emily Johnston's uh, information appeared in five different documents, at the end of the day, we need a list with uh, Emily Johnston and my address listed one time so that you can send me an effective letter telling me that my data was um, impacted. Um, we also want to really focus on normalization so that we can do good reporting, right? We want to be able to tell um, regulators, um, stakeholders, how many people were affected in the breach and, and so that you can have a good idea going forward of what your next steps might need to be. So there's a lot of um, issues here, right? I mean, the problem is that extracting data subject information from unstructured data um, can be really costly, uh, difficult, and, and entirely manual. And not only that, but it's typically on a very short time frame. Um, a lot of the cases that we did, uh, my former uh, job, we had five to seven days um, for hundreds of thousands of documents. It's a very manual process. It's rife with opportunity for error. Um, so what our software is going to do is allow for early analysis of that data, uh, fast and accurate extraction of data subject information, minimizing uh, the, the amount of manual work that has to go into to it, um, and reducing, of course, your overall review costs and the time that has to go into every single project. Um, we understand that um, when you're working on a cyber matter, you're typically uh, part of that business's worst ever month, right? So we want to have the data mining experience be smooth um, and not uh, add to the burden that the company is already undergoing. So what we're trying to do here is empower efficient and accurate identification and notification of affected data subjects post cyber incident. Uh, so I don't have anything to show you today um, because we are right into um, our demo, we are going to start doing demos at Legal Tech. So if you guys are at Legal Tech, anybody who's watching, if you want to reach out, let me know. I'd love to get with you and show you the show you the product. We're entering beta in February, um, and then we're going to be aiming to go live in March. Um, what are you going to see um, when you see that product? You're going to see a, a four primary focuses of development. I wanted to make this uh, review tool easier and more effective for the end client. So 
we're going to have a we have a person data store that allows for that many to many relationship of data subjects to documents. So if you say, hey, Emily, uh, my CEO noticed that uh, her information was inside of that notification list. She wants to see every single document that uh, her personal information was on. I can pull all of those documents and give you that pile of documents. Um, it's not we extract the information once and then click a button and we can't connect um, that person back to those documents. This is going to allow for people connected to documents and documents connected to people. Um, our review approach is going to completely reduce manual entry. We should be able to do entry without typing a single word um, is the goal. So we have four different approaches for, uh, for review and extraction, uh, a UI-based approach, a tabular-based approach, um, an import-based approach, and then a back-end approach. So depending on um, the, the data quality, depending on the type of data that, that you're looking at and depending on sort of the um, uh, the skill set of the people doing the review, you'll be able to use one of those four extraction methods um, that should uh, virtually reduce um, all typing required um, is the goal. So we have built out some uh, different approaches there that's going to allow anyone from a PM and admin user to extract many, many documents at once um, down to, you know, your standard document reviewer who's going to be able to just highlight and click and never have to type a thing. Um, for our notification list, we focused a lot on creating a strong notification list with good deduplication. Um, you know, I, uh, I've gotten in trouble for reviews that have gone over time. We've gotten fired for bad notification lists, right? So notification list has to be the thing that we focus on. Um, our review process can be the best, uh, but if we produce a bad uh, product, then it, it doesn't matter. It's like uh, in eDiscovery, if, if my review tool is super flashy and great, but I, you know, produce all the privileged information every single time, uh, you're not going to want to use that review tool again. Um, so we've spent a lot of time working on uh, entity normalization, working on um, building in things like um, address normalization, um, name checking, um, verifying um, how we create duplicates is quite advanced on the on the back end. And so you're going to see a notification list that's clean the first time um, and that hopefully you're not going to have to spend a lot of time cleaning up or changing on the back end. Um, the goal with that then is um, we did give you a way inside the tool to see matches and to adjust matches if you want to do that inside the tool. You can do it outside of the tool and upload any adjustments that you want to make to the to the system's matching. Um, but but also you should be able to do the groupings, look at the groupings and, and move on to the notification list quickly and easily. Um, it also creates notification lists very quickly. So large data sets, you're going to still see those notification lists being created quickly, which means you can create them throughout the case if you want to as a QC device. Um, and then something that I'm really excited about is the density analysis. What we're going to do is you're going to be able to upload your data into the tool. And then almost like running a search term report, you're going to be able to see um, what's inside my data. So this document has not only, uh, I don't only know that it has a social security number hit, but I know that it has 2,500 social security numbers in this document. So maybe I want to start with that document. Maybe I want to give that document to one of my more advanced reviewers. Um, I know that these other documents, they might have, um, they might have uh, entities within them. They might have names. They might have um, they might have credit card numbers. But maybe there's only one. So maybe that's not as um, highly prioritized of a document. The other thing we're going to let you do is pull out that information. So I can give you on day one. Here's a list of everything that the system believes is a social security number. Um, you know, it might not be something that you're going to rely on for, for reporting, but it should give you a good scope of your case. You can say to your stakeholders, potentially even to your regulators, I believe that there's 2,000 social security, unique social security numbers at odds in this case because I've been able to extract those on day one. Um, you could also use that to, you know, do research, find names, um, do do quick notification of, of folks with impacted uh, social security numbers, um, and that's going to help you get ahead of your, your uh, event quickly. 
Uh, we also built in a few different um, things that should help with communicating to stakeholders like heat maps of the United States. It's going to give you a sense of where where are my uh, folks that I need to notify. Um, obviously, every single state at this point um, is uh, has privacy laws or is in the process of creating them. Um, and so uh, I understand that the notification requirements for each state are different. So you might need to know, um, OK, I have 500 people in California. I have 2,000 people in Texas. Um, our heat maps are going to allow you to see that in a visual way and help you plan out your uh, your approach going forward. And of course, all of this is built on top of the great product that you're about to see from Mike. That's going to allow for great matter management, oversight, um, et cetera. So, what our goals were in the development stage were to focus on the extraction phase as much as the identification phase. I wanted the extraction process to be quick and easy for the reviewers. Um, when I was running review teams, I saw, I, I ran review teams in e-discovery for probably a decade before I got into cyber review teams. I saw more mental health, more burnout, um, more um, just overall issues with review teams um, in cyber than I ever did in e-discovery because of the time pressures, because of the manual process, and because we don't have tools that are enabling um, our work um, in the same way that we do for e-discovery. And so it's incredibly important to me to solve this problem well um, and for us to have an extraction process that's going to allow teams to feel confident that they're doing their job well. Um, we're going to we have developed our robust deduplication normalization process to allow for clean notification lists. Um, we've capitalized on that existing functionality from both legal and our data minimization work streams. Um, we have our deduplication phase in a single tool, so you don't have to go back and forth uh, for deduplication. And then, of course, the number one set is to reduce the amount of manual work while improving overall accuracy, um, minimizing typos, minimizing the opportunity for um, errors on the uh, review side that's going to create sort of a garbage in, garbage out um, end product. So that is uh, a very fast overview of where we are with cyber. Uh, like I said, we've been working on it for probably 11 months now and are incredibly excited to start showing it to people. Um, if anybody on the call here um, is involved in in cyber matters or has used any anything on the market and wants to see what we have, like I said, I'll be doing demos at Legal Tech if you'll be there. Uh, if not, um, I'm happy to get with you on a Zoom or uh, or anything so that we can get feedback, get your input. I've tried to get as much uh, market input as possible while we're building this because I really want it to be a tool that the market is excited about and wants to use uh, because I'm, I'm very passionate about solving uh, some of those problems that exist in sort of current cyber extraction approaches. So thanks for that. And I'm going to hand it off to Mike. Thank you, Emily. And in just a second, you guys can let me know if my desktop is coming through. And seeing me now? Yes, we are. Perfect. All right, then. Um, in the uh, interest of time, we're going to move through at a good pace. I've already logged into my iConnect system. A couple of things that both uh, um, Jonathan and Emily had mentioned throughout that I think you'll see now in the foundational piece, the uh, the review platform that kind of started it all and we've springboarded off is the notion of um, intuitive, cohesive, ease of use, all of those things. And that's really been something that uh, I've liked to talk about when I demonstrate iConnect. I'm about to go to my 23rd legal tech, I believe, coming up uh, next week. Um, efficiency of review. We want this to be as efficient and as easy as possible for all parties coming in, whether or not you're a PM or an admin or whether or not you're just a reviewer who needs to go in and do three things. In that instance, we want to keep this as simple as possible. Minimize clicks. Let you get to the data as quickly as possible. Make things uh, templatized and make things dynamic. So, We'll take a look into those, and I'm going to highlight a few of the latest enhancements inside that help make all of this possible. For the vast majority of users, the entire iConnect system is a grand total of three screens for review. The first screen doesn't really even count because it's just a listing of all projects I have access to. As a user, I'll grab on any of my project names. It'll jump me right in. All that being said, though, 
because of the heavy use of templates throughout the system, you'll hear me mention that a number of times, it makes it very easy for users to come in, upper right hand corner, kick off a brand new project on the fly, deal with things like right from the dashboard, drag and drop as they need to come in and upload any sort of data from native files that need to be processed through to the third party productions that you may receive that simply get dragged over into one of the boxes and added into your database. And to that effect, let's jump into a database and see what we've got in place here. So inside of an iConnect system, you have those sort of two traditional views, that kind of table view, and then of course that up close document view approach. It's all of the things we do around that, I think that really helps make this stand out. One, right off the bat, and for those that have, have used iConnect before, they'll notice right off the hop as we jump in, there are a few little differences right away with the front end UI. However, for anyone that has worked with iConnect before, none of those changes are so drastic that you think you've now gone gotten lost because again we try to minimize all the clicks so right off the bat inside of our table view scenario i always like to think of it as being the screen to go and find our data so whether or not you're somebody who likes to rearrange the types of views in your table in place here where i can easily jump in flip around to a completely different view as far as my case facts go rearranging the data in place to lighting back up views that bring for me any of my coding designations and things that may sit in place as we see here. I'll clear out this little quick search. Having the coding tags, for example, written back into a table gives you a quick and easy ability to step in and then say, hey, you know what? I really need to bring all the documents to be flagged as a hot document, filter and sort on those. And just like that as a user, I can easily come in now and see exactly what we have in place, slide over and do it in my further reviews. However, the next big, big enhancement is a revamping and a switch over to what we're calling the intuitive search. You'll notice here across the top, my toolbar allows me to now search and break apart very easily and separate out metadata from record data, from various entities to do other analytics in place here, being able to search on principal documents inside of a near duplicates thread or parent documents in an email thread, et cetera. And you'll see we've now built all of those automated facets and categories, including enhanced entity extraction right in place here, whether or not I want to break apart the record data, whether or not I am going to be searching on things like credit card numbers, phone numbers, fax numbers, banking information, email addresses. While I may not know what they are, I just need to know if that's inside of the data set to help me quickly identify documents that may carry additional risk. But you'll see from a user standpoint, we've tried to make this very intuitive as well. They step in, I can simply say, hey, I'm looking for my custodian. And the custodian is going to equal, for example, and you'll see how the facets will in fact automate in place here. And it does that exact same thing when we deal with entities, et cetera. I can then simply multi-select who I need and run any of my searches, et cetera. Now, beyond that, from the table view, Next major enhancement is now what we call supporting more dynamic workflows. We've had visualization tools in iConnect over the years. However, with the latest update, those can now be built right in with our table view workspace. So if you like those charts and graphs, whereas for example, here I've grabbed a breakdown of all of our record types by custodian. And not only can I see that C Monahan, here's my top custodian based off of number of documents, I can actually see exactly what those documents are. Let me see all the email in the, the database. Let me see all the facts or the uh, PDF documents, et cetera. Point and click runs those just like a search, much like Jonathan mentioned regarding the data minimization <laughs> charting and graphing. As we come down, I've got graphs in place here, breaking down my record types. I've got my timelines. And because I'm a fan of working with analytical clusters, I've even included those here in the bottom. All of these, again, are in fact dynamic. So if I was to step in place here and say, oh, you know what? I just want all of the email here from C. Monahan. I could point and click. And we'll see how not only does that bring back for my users the documents in their table view, but it also updates and keeps in sync 
all of the charts and graphs. I can see the timelines. I can see the conceptual clusters that this particular custodian had been working with, etc. Again, all trying to make it very easy to work with and get to your data in a minimal amount of clicks right from one particular view or screen. Now, to go along with those dynamic workflows as far as working with charts, graphs, rearranging the layout, etc., none of these quote unquote boxes, my table view, the graphs towards the bottom, none of those are fixed in place. I can literally grab and move any of these wherever I want. If I prefer this graph to be at the top of my UI, I'm able to step in and do so. As I've just done here, pulled it over to the very top, I've now got my table sitting in here right underneath. From a user standpoint, if I like to have my organizational folders, something again, a little bit unique in iConnect, giving you the ability to create any number of folder panels and then organizing the documents, just like a virtual filing cabinet of sorts. If I really like to have those on say, the right-hand side of the screen, I'm able to step in and do so as well. Again, trying to make this a very simple approach to that data. If I'm going to step in and I need to, for example, find things like those entities we talked about, they'll bring up documents here with phone numbers sitting on them, for example. I don't have to know what the values are. I'm just simply running the search as I slide on over, take a look inside of my viewer. We'll see that not only are analytics highlighted in place, but it's all about the accuracy and ensuring that the information is not only on point, but it's something that you can then rely on. Great example here, copy of a fax transmission form. I simply ran a simple search which said, hey, bring me any document that's got a phone number on it. I don't care what it is. And as we identify the entities, the analytic engine looks at all of the entities around looking for accuracy, put it in this proper context. As such, it recognizes hey, this is a copy of a fax transmission form. That is in fact a fax number, not a phone number. So it's not bringing it back as a false positive for me. Again, it's all about having that intelligence with the data itself. And then of course, nice and easy traditional style coding panel on the side where we can jump in and organize our data from there. From this particular view as well, a few other things that are a little unique inside of iConnect are the ability to, within a document, literally just highlight a piece of text fit a comment in place here, key for Jones Depot. I can't type it all today, issue three, and I can send off a notification. Essentially, you'll see my little comments here, key for the Jones Depot, it knows exactly which text I'm highlighting on. And then again, because it's all about that user experience, not only giving them the charts and graphs that work for them, but also putting things well within their reach, easy to find. As I slide back on over here, I'm going to clear out this search quickly. And being able beyond just the coding and the tagging, of course, of my documents, being able to easily find all documents that are related to what I see on screen here, related because they're part of the same email thread. We've rearranged the entire thread in place with all of my documents where I can easily grab and subset and slide over to take a look near duplicates, similar concepts, etc., grouping them together nice and neatly for my reviewers. The last little area I think that really adds to uh, making this a very efficient way to approach our data and takes us really to the next step in our review platform scenario is the enhanced sidebar. Number of those functions we talked about um, from a project manager through to Think of it as a bit of a power user, et cetera. Again, it's about minimizing clicks, making sure you don't have to jump to three different, four different, 18 different steps to do something. So the enhanced sidebar down the side that allows me to quickly add records to my database, jump to the batches that may be part of it, bring up any of the charting or graphing that goes along with it. For example, if you're using our unique oversight feature, we run an AI model underneath the review workflow that tries to identify errors in the coding, brings that to you in real time so you can have a far more accurate and precise review set prior to any sort of production. Two, some very handy things like being able to jump right in and manipulate the fields right within the database. As a project manager, we need to get a new field before the data comes in. Being able to do that right in one place works great. And that even includes finding those 
unique exemplar documents that Ian referenced at the beginning regarding our little BP oil spill. I can literally slide in here and without having to leave my database, see the examples we have in place. And here's a great example of that virtual document that we had submitted into the system to go out and find all of our data. So all that being said, that is a little bit of a whirlwind tour into that iConnect platform, including some unique things beyond just the enhancements that still carry forward, like being able to bring in our various thumbnail views of the data, where I can get a preview regardless of what my native documents or my images may look like in place. And we can, of course, toggle these around from very small to very large. It all comes down to more content, more context, what works best for that user. All that being said, I will stop my share at this point in time and let Ian pick up. That's great. Thank you very much, Mike. And um, uh, the same way uh, you said, can you see my screen? Can you hear me okay? Nice and clear for me, sir. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, I, I just wanted to kind of follow up on a few things that, that you've seen today, uh, certainly from Mike and from Emily and from uh, from John Uni. Um, it, all of the, you know, although what you saw today were three applications, as I mentioned earlier, they're all built on the same foundational architecture. And I think that's significant. It's it, It's been strong and powerful for some time. And I think that gives everyone a comfort level. Uh, we're taking a very responsible approach to being able to give you the the ability to do that um, uh, analysis and identification of information that's important to you. All of those pieces kind of interplay together. Um, there are some situations where um, there's an incident, but you have to look at the documents individually. If that's the case, you can bounce over uh, over into review to actually do individual document identification. Same thing with data governance. You may find a data governance issue uh, where you then have subject matter experts who need to go and look at documents. Maybe they find a whole bunch of documents that are related to an issue, and then they want to use our AI technology to be able to find similar documents to that using our conceptually similar functionality. So I think what we're seeing internally is a really strong interplay, certainly with the artificial intelligence that we have built in. Um, we've been in the AI game, uh, built into the back end of iConnect for quite some time now. You're seeing things today like e um, uh, email threading and, and, uh, and near duplicate detection. That's kind of the plain Jane stuff, but we also have the other pieces of oversight and predict Cal and TAR, the ability from, from an exemplar perspective that without crafting some kind of a prompt, you can literally take a paragraph of text, drop it in and say, go find stuff like this. And uh, not only does that sound good in concept, it's actually good in actual uses as well. And we actually, as I mentioned, have um, several different uh, tech papers that talk about the use of the exemplar technology. I want to go one step further though to talk about support. Uh, there's nothing worse than developing a relationship with a vendor or using a platform and you run into an issue. You have a question, something doesn't look quite right, you're trying to achieve something, you want to know if you can get there quicker. It's very, very important to have that backup of training and support. A couple of different quotes on the screen there. Uh, you, you can see uh, iConnect support is certainly regarded as one of the strongest in the industry and uh, and continues to, uh, to, to step it up. We've got uh, folks in our support team who have been with us 15, 15 plus years, uh, some of them even more. And I think that's very, very important to note that um, you are not out on a limb. It's not like you, uh, you you jump into an application, you have a question, and then you get voicemail, um, or, or, or you get a, a junior who, who just flat out you know, knows less than you do. Um, so certainly the maturity and the experience of our support team is something we're very, very excited about internally. Just to wrap things up today, um, we did want to talk about how do you learn more. Uh, we have a very, uh, very strong resources blog on the iConnect website, which is iConnect uh, with one n.com. Um, obviously, we're on social media, be it uh, Instagram, threads, LinkedIn. Uh, we're always talking about what's new within the platform. Uh, the downloads, as I mentioned before, a few of them have been, been made available through ASEDS to be able to download from their website. Others are available through the resources section of, 
of the iConnect website. We are at Legal Week. We're uh, on the main floor, just in on the left, and uh, we'll be very easy to find. And um, further to that, we're actually very excited to be uh, co-sponsoring the ACEDS event on the uh, on the Tuesday evening. So um, if, in fact, you are um, interested in that event, uh, check out the ACEDS website or the ACEDS LinkedIn, and you can find details. And again, we're very excited to work with ACEDS and, and be a, a co-sponsor of that event. Finally, if you'd like to learn more, uh, you've heard some pretty strong experts on the phone today um, in, in and around the document review space, in and around the incident response space, in and around the data governance space. Uh, we know way more than we talked about today, and, uh, and we're more than happy to share that with you or, in fact, um, um, or in fact have a look with uh, uh at the products even more as a demo, whether or not that demo is going to take place in the uh, at Legal Tech, uh, sorry, Legal Week, um, or after. We're we're more than happy to share that information with you. So, um, uh, Mike, I'm, I'll maybe hand it back to you. Um, I had a little problem navigating whether or not any questions had come in. If they did, more than happy to answer them. And if not, you can certainly uh, pass them off to us after. Because uh, I know we're getting tight on time. Thanks so much, Ian, um, for a great presentation. Uh, thank you, actually, to Emily, to Jonathan, and, of course, to Mike. Uh, Ian, always a pleasure. Um, thank you so much. Great platform, folks. Great new features. Check it out at iConnect.com. All right. Uh, thanks for joining us on the ACEDS webinar channel today. Um, thank you to our partner, iConnect, and uh, we'll see you all next week at Legal Week. Uh, please visit aceds.org for a complete list of upcoming web upcoming webinars. Uh, have a great day, everyone. Be kind to one another. Welcome to another session of We Connect, where we explore the ideas, companies, and key players that continue to raise the bar.